Over the last two years, a lot of MMOs have gone through a lot of controversy, and a lot of MMOs have grown to unreasonable amounts, and other MMOs have become amazing in their own aspects. But a big issue that the MMO world is currently facing is a lot of the MMOs seem to be almost scamming their players or actually scamming their players. For example, in MapleStory, you can buy these loot boxes, and these loot boxes have a percentage chance to get a certain item out of those loot boxes. But apparently over the course of the years, devs have made the chance lower and lower and lower, making it where players will never get the items out of these loot boxes and they will just continuously infinitely buy them. In fact, it's gotten so bad that they are being fined $8.9 million for allegedly misleading their players with, with in-game items. Now, I know there is a lot of people who play MapleStory and it's on my list of games to play. But the issue with MapleStory is this. It, it's literally just this. From my understanding, the game is insanely fun the loops are really addicting the gotcha system is really addicting but then you have this where they are just borderline scamming their players out of their money which is absolutely crazy to think about and this game is still very very popular i don't think they really lost that many people over this incident now they did lose a good amount of players but there is still so many people playing this game, even though the devs basically ripped the money out of their own pocket. And I just don't understand that. Then last year on January 23rd, Blizzard was forced to completely pull out all of their games from China due to a simple dispute. Now, nobody knows what this dispute is, but being that it's a dispute, that probably means that those two companies no longer like each other. Like, let's just be honest with each other. And it led to over 1 million players across Activision Blizzard Universe asked for a refund. That is absolutely insane. And the amount of videos that came from this of like people just like having a good time, having like dance parties and lobbies and stuff like that was actually kind of cool. But it's not cool that basically over 1 million players all lost everything at once due to a dispute either over money or because someone was disrespectful to somebody. Nobody actually knows what this dispute is, but still it's absolutely crazy that this happened last year. And obviously people are probably still playing with like a VPN and stuff like that, but that doesn't change that most of the people aren't doing that. Obviously we had to talk about the day before. The day before a few months ago basically scammed a bunch of players i believe it was around forty thousand or so players basically bought the game the game was nowhere near where the devs promised in fact let's go ahead and read this here where to begin with the day before the high profile survival mmo that instead launched as a terrible broken extraction shooter on monday just four days after release where it became one of steam's lowest scored games ever you know how hard you have to try to be one of the lowest scored games ever like you basically have to put out a stick game actually i think somebody doing a stick game would have been rated higher than this game which is absolutely insane like one of the things that the dev said after all this happened is that they didn't scam their players they put out what they said they it, it was just buggy that's all it was it was just bugs guys come on like i don't understand how these devs are even in the market anymore with these devs in particular you would think that these guys would already be like completely sued and wouldn't have a platform to even speak on at this point like it's absolutely insane after the day before obviously we have the quinfall which we have no clue if it's a scam or not now there is evidence that they bought assets from an asset store which is a little weird but it has been done in the past and some great games have come out of it. The issue with the assets is it looks like they are using it in every single aspect of the entire game as if they're not designing a single aspect themselves. Now, everything with the Quinfall is completely speculation and it's really hard to see where this game is going, but the devs are still kind of just chugging along and they're like, yeah, uh, don't worry about the hate. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just keep going. Just keep going. And it's kind of entertaining because you'd never know if they're actually just going to put out like a God tier game and all of us were wrong. So I think it's something to at least look forward to. And I also want to visit the other side of the spectrum where we see NCSoft and Bandai Namco. Obviously, we have NCSoft releasing Throne and Liberty. With Throne and Liberty releasing, they're actually got on an investor call talking about how it's not doing so well, basically, and do not show the revenue data for this year, which is something you never want to see or hear from investors when you have a company. And obviously, the bottom is just kind of speculation where they're like, oh, they're waiting for the Amazon's global release. But in my personal opinion, I don't think Amazon games can save the day. 
I mean, we've already seen a little bit of Amazon games, and obviously that's when they were still a little new with games like Lost Ark and New World. So maybe it could be better, but I will say with the tiny, tiny amount of pay to win that it does have, a lot of people in the States will just not even play it. They won't even give the game a chance. Or they'll play like the beginning and then they'll just be completely done with the game after that. I think that's something that Amazon game should really look at is like if it has pay to win, you will make some money in the short term, but the game will also die very quickly. Now we go to Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco reveals it recently canceled five games saying it plans stricter quality control. The publisher reported a 96% drop in year on year profits in its game division. Now it is a little weird for them to compare these profits because that is when Elden Ring released. And I think Elden Ring is like a mega mega giant that you can't really compare to other games. Now, I think Elden Ring sets a really, really good standard because of how good the game is. But overall, you can't be comparing like Elden Ring to the year you release Blue Protocol. That just doesn't make sense. Blue Protocol, from my understanding, it has a lot of fantastic aspects. But at the same time, Blue Protocol is a very niche game that markets towards the people who like the anime art style, are into MMOs, and like the like super flashy Genshin type of combat basically is what that game kind of forces its way into where a game like Elden Ring it goes to everybody on the market as long as you like a kind of difficult game basically for me personally I believe all this drama is extremely stupid and I honestly don't understand where a lot of this comes from now on some brighter news there is actually two games that I believe are really really good and look good in general First off is Chrono Odyssey, which kind of looks like if you took Dark Souls and then you put it into a MMO, which I am a huge, huge fan of. Now, there's not a lot of information on the game whatsoever. From the tiny, tiny amount we've gotten on the game, which is basically a game trailer and a gameplay trailer, the game looks insanely good, especially if they continue with what they are doing in the trailers and they just put that into the game and they just keep updating it in that way. I think it's going to be a really, really good MMO as long as there's no pay to win in it. And then obviously one that a lot of people have been looking forward to for a very long time is Ashes of Creation. Ashes of creation already has a ton of aspects that i absolutely love the different races the classes the way the skills work the world building the graphics like i love all this stuff i think the biggest thing with ashes of creation is obviously it is taking a long time to come out but i kind of have some respect for the devs because i believe the head dev was basically like yeah we're not releasing this game unless i believe this game is perfect so deal with it which you know makes a lot of people mad but you also kind of have to give some respect on his name because he's basically trying to make a masterpiece that'll be around for years and years and years to come with all that being said as mmo players i truly believe that we need to hold these companies to much much higher standards and if a game is borderline scamming all of their players we just need to stand together and be like no th that's it no we are not playing this no and we're just done with the game and we just completely abandoned the game that's what happened to the day before so there's still some loyal fans to the day before but when the game released and it was a scam 99 percent of the mmo community is like nope nope it's over we are not playing this do not touch it do not do anything now there is more drama that happened recently in the mmo world but these are the main aspects that i believe are way way above like everything else in the mmo world currently and I believe that these are the things that are kind of killing MMOs altogether. And if MMOs continue down this path of like scamming their players, bailing off release because a lot of people just don't like the company or like the game itself, then we are going to slowly go down this path with MMOs where MMOs are not going to exist anymore because us as players aren't holding games to a higher standard like what we should be doing, especially with releases like Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3, or God of War Ragnarok. I know this was a little bit of a rant today, but I wanted to bring up a lot of information on the MMO world and where I believe it should go in the future. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.